Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. We're about to begin a session titled Can Local Cinema Travel Globally? The speakers are Sanjay Ayer, Manize Jahangir, and Meenu Gaur. And our moderator is Mazhar Zaidi. I would like to request you to please switch off your mobile phones or put them on silent mode. There will be a question and answer session at the end of the discussion. We would appreciate if complete silence is observed while the session is in progress. Our moderator for this session is Mazhar Zaidi. Mazhar Zaidi has been working as a filmmaker and a journalist for over 20 years in different parts of the world. His first feature film, Zinda Bhag, became Pakistan's first ever entry for the Academy Awards. As a journalist, he has worked with BBC World Service in London for 11 years. He has contributed numerous articles to leading regional, international and local publications, including Newsline, The News, The News on Sunday, and Outlook India. He has produced and directed several documentaries and programs for leading media organizations including the BBC, Sky News, German TV channel, ARD, ART, and other independent media houses. He headed the Department of Documentaries and Current Affairs at the English language TV channel, Dawn News. His previous film, Nar Narman, was screened at the National Film Theatre in London. I present you, Mazhar Zaidi. Uh, thank you everyone to um, join us today. Uh, before uh, I start the session, I'd just like to mention um, briefly about this wonderful uh, initiative that is going on uh, in Karachi for the last few months. It's called I Am Karachi. They have a stall outside and uh, you can go and get more information about it. It's basically a, a, a consortium of civil society organizations getting together uh, for peace in Karachi. They're doing different arts and cultural activities. Um, now coming to the session, before I introduce the panelists, uh, first of all I would like to mention that you know this is a session on definitely not on revival of Pakistani cinema because uh, of late there has been so much debate about it that I think we should move beyond that and, and uh, try to discuss uh, more aspects of uh, cinema. So in 2013 uh, we saw a lot of Pakistani films being released and, and there was a, a new surge uh, in the distribution circles. However, very few of them actually made it uh, globally. Uh, namely, uh, VAR uh, was uh, released in, in UK um, and after that uh, Josh and Seedling also uh, went to UK and UAE uh, and Zindabhag also of course also travelled quite a lot. Uh, but why the, the today's session is why uh, only few films manage to uh, go abroad and why uh, it is very important for local independent cinema. I mean we are talking about non-mainstream cinema because obviously the mainstream Bollywood and Hollywood cinema they already have a global outreach. So here essentially we are talking about uh, the non-mainstream cinema, why it is important uh, for the non-mainstream cinema to uh, travel abroad uh, globally and what it does, you know. So I think uh, I, I would like to start with uh, Munize, who's a, a well-known journalist. She's also uh, made documentaries. Um, you know, Munize, can you uh, tell us a little bit about why, in the first place, uh, local cinema, which is locally produced, independent cinema, because mainstream cinema, as I said, already travels abroad. They already have distribution networks. Why it is important for independent cinema to go abroad? Well, I think that, uh, firstly, thank you so much for having us here. It's really nice to be in Karachi and see so many women. We don't see that now in Punjab that much. So uh, it's nice to see that. Well, it's important for local cinema to travel abroad for the obvious reason. I think uh, people want to see, you know, want to present themselves abroad through culture and cinema is a huge part of it. We have music, we have picture, we have storytelling. That's the way we present ourselves to the world. Unfortunately, I think uh, when it comes to Pakistan, we are presented through the prism of terror. And here is an opportunity to be seen through fiction, through what the story that we want to tell. And I think that's why, w because I'm in the media, I would, it, it, for me, um, the way cinema has evolved in Pakistan, um, if you allow me, I would like to comment on it. And you know, I've spoken to you a lot about why is it that it's so difficult for us to make films and you said, you know, we don't have proper distribution houses, we don't have, there's a lot of technical problems, I think we all know that. But you also said to me that for, for a good film you need the right ingredients, like you need a good ingredients to make a good cake. 
do we allow musicians to flourish here do we um do we have acting schools here are we interested in art and culture do we allow it i mean in certain parts of pakistan now we don't allow it uh, in in certain parts of pakistan you're killed for singing for dancing for all of these things and all of these things are essential to film whether it's pre- freedom of expression whether it's uh, freedom to practice your art your storytelling has to be told without any fear and i think that those ingredients make a good film and local cinema needs to go abroad to to display this to display our story um unfortunately in the media we have been unable in in the sense that the films or the documentary films that have gone out have have shown a side of pakistan which is also true these things do happen here but it's a very um dark side of pakistan uh cinema could have cinema could have had a different um uh, effect and i think that the fil- films that have come out of pakistan have shown also a very stark reality and i think uh there comes a point where i i wonder sometimes because when i do go and see a film and there's a, there's a very thin line between uh entertainment and reality i think all our filmmakers sometimes want that they should be close to reality but then if i am tired and i want to go and see a good film i may not go and see that film i may just go see a film that's entertaining so i think perhaps it's important to take both yeah no i i would just like to add to what munis is saying that i think she mentioned the the prism uh, through which media looks at uh, societies or countries and represents it so i think in that context uh, cinema becomes uh, even more important because we all know that uh, news media has its limitation of of what it shows and how it shows and what it comments upon whereas uh, cinema can actually um, you know have a much larger audience and it can uh, have a huge uh, you know influence hugely the public discourse also so i think in that context cinema becomes very important so minu i would like to ask you uh, that you know given zindabad's experience that it is one of those films from pakistan which traveled quite extensively uh, so you know share us uh, what what was the experience like and what could have been better i mean how would you have wanted it to be more uh, you know travel more globally uh, what could have been you would have uh, wanted ideally uh well you know uh, the thing is as you mentioned before that uh, the uh, sort of the bumper crop of films which was 2013 and 2014 pakistani films um in different ways they have uh, reached international audiences um some of them have uh, you know accessed that audience through international film festivals and uh, some of them like with zinda bhag we were distributed uh, theatrically released in the us and in the uae and got on to video on demand platforms like netflix and itunes so but i think that's still um not exactly the kind of reach and audience that possibly this panel is concerned with today um i for me if i think about what didn't happen with the film and i really wish should happen with all the films that are coming out of pakistan is that you know uh, there it's it's very interesting that if we want to see a non mainstream indian film or a non mainstream bangladeshi film or a non mainstream sri lankan film or a non mainstream Nep- nepali film uh, my chance of seeing it uh, is in new york right i'll have to be in a festival in new york or in uh, germany or somewhere to actually access south asian content which is the case with zindabad also that i don't think that the film actually traveled i mean it wa- it went to the uh, colombo international film festival because colombo has uh, uh, and india you know which india also has a lot of film festivals but there's some brilliant bangladeshi films like uh, tv that was made in i think 2012 uh, which i only got to see in a film festival abroad and sri lankan cinema etc so i think that's that would be what i would be concerned with international yes but what about the region you know i would like because when we tell stories from pakistan or when we tell stories from bangladesh these stories uh, they can they can translate you know pretty seamlessly into each other's countries for instance zinda bhag is a film in punjabi about three young men and i think it would be a story of any three boys from indian punjab you know and even the la- language is accessible without subtitles but it hasn't gone to indian punjab so that that would be my wish that with my next film or with all other pakistani films that regional audiences are able to access it mm. 
अच्छा मनीजर आई वुड लाइक टू कम बैक टू यू यू वर मैंशनिंग यू नो द फैक्ट दैट दैट मीडिया लुक्स एट थिंग्स इन इन अ सर्टन वे एंड मीन यू ऑल्सो मैंशन दैट वट काइंड ऑफ स्टोरीज वी नीड टू टेल सो everybody agrees that news media has its limitations and cinema can be more uh, you know uh, out there it can reach more people but even in cinema what are the kind of stories we are uh, going to tell like wh- what is important like you know we have seen examples of iranian cinema coming in the 90s and and becoming kind of a brand uh, globally and people started looking at iran through uh, the cinema like everybody knew more about iranian cinema than probably what's going on in iran so it is quite significant that way so Pakistani cinema is is kind of you know uh, coming together now so what are the kind of stories that ideally Pakistani cinema should be telling the world about us because we all know that media only tells us wo- one story you know we all know that but i can't tell people what films to make i think that would be unfair they should make the films that they want to make but i will say this and um, i'm not saying this because uh, i mean please don't uh, i'm be- being the devil's advocate but I think when media is corporatized and films are corporatized and people want to give a give a certain um, message through their film whether that's in the form of propaganda and then they display it as a form of entertainment it may work for a while but it may not work for the long haul uh, in India when they've made anti Pakistan films it hasn't really worked in the long run at the box office I know that there have been films made uh, with a certain agenda in Pakistan and we've all uh, kind of uh, banked on people's patriotism to come out and see those films. I think that's not fair to the viewer. I think people should be given stories that are worth watching. If I want to see a thriller, why would I go see a badly made propaganda thriller then I would see the best propaganda. I'll see James Bond. So I think um we have to be a bit wary of that because there's very little money to go around in pakistan for making films i think you know that better than i do and i would actually like you to talk about that also because i'm sure there are lots of young filmmakers who want to make a film here and uh, what is the way to make a film um is it is is this just the way to make a film that somebody say gives you the money and says these are the messages that need to be in that film and what happens to your story then So I think a um, you manipul you, you monopolize the market when you do that. Secondly, I think in the long ro- long run I'm quite confident it won't work and it's unfair to the viewer because you're telling them that you must come to see the film because you are Pakistani. In Yeah. I think tell what was beautiful about Iranian films was that they were also uh, part of a country part of a society which was very repressive but then they made a decision okay we won't we won't talk about politics we will talk about social issues and and they made very beautiful films but they stayed away from politics but we want to talk about politics and we want to do it in a certain way with certain funding i don't see i mean how this will go how this will turn out i i i dread to think and will this encourage film making in pakistan young people who really want to tell their story is a big question mark on that i think i'm re- i'm really missing our third panelist who's uh, sanjay ayer if he was here uh, i would have liked to talk to him about uh, this film that he has uh, acted in it's called lucia it's a kannada language film which came out in 2013 it's a very interesting and very ideal example of an independent film going big it was made in a very uh, low budget uh, uh, production and it went not only traveled globally a lot it did very well in india uh, so that would have been great to uh, discuss with him uh, about that whole experience because that's kind of a case study almost that we everybody talks about lucia um but anyway minu i would like to uh, also discuss with you um, about this whole uh, new arrival of multiplexes in pakistan and how uh, it is actually determining what kind of content goes in because it's not just that we are getting very fancy looking cinemas there actually much more to it than just uh, very neat clean fancy looking cinema it's changing the whole pattern of distribution uh, globally it has done it in india and now it is doing it in pakistan so can you talk about that a little bit uh yeah i mean uh, the coming of the multiplex is a global phenomena right um, and it's happened in india and it's happening in pakistan so let's like it's it's not uh, 
it's not just about how it um, you know streamlines content but it's also opened up the market to filmmakers like us so there's that whole positive aspect of it yeah. because previously uh, you know uh, indie film uh, could not dream of re getting a theatrical release but now whether it is india or whether it's pakistan uh, indie filmmakers get theatrical releases because multiplexes um, uh, you know release those films because they are reaching out to a certain niche audience uh, now, while that's very positive and uh, it does also limit audiences because as you all know, a multiplex um, cinema ticket is very expensive and uh, not everybody can buy that ticket and go and watch a film in a multiplex. And the single screen cinemas um, are all being uh, torn down and multiplexes are uh, you know, taking their place. So yes, I think that's a very good point because I think what's now the challenge to sort of reach audiences is another kind of challenge for you know filmmakers like us. Okay, the multiplex, we had an eight week run in the multiplex, but we know, still we know that our film didn't actually reach uh, the larger uh, you know, uh, people who actually may have gone to a single screen cinema which has a 80 rupee ticket or a 100 rupee ticket. So I think with you, you mentioned Lucia and Lucia, uh, which is a Kannada film, it's a very good example because the success of Lucia has to do with the fact that the filmmaker took upon themselves the distribution and came up with very, very interesting strategies to take their film to people. So they kind of sidetracked the main uh, distribution networks. And with Zindabad also, what we've done recently, we have this um, sort of temporary cinema, mobile cinema, uh, platform called Kachi Takis and Kachi Takis as you know you would know basically means Kachi meaning temporary so these are like this is like a pop-up cinema which sort of goes to areas such as Korangi and um, shows our film so we had 70, 70 screenings of Zindabhag in Kurangi alone and uh, they were free screenings and it was a fabulous experience because it kind of left the confines of a multiplex it went out to people whose story Zindabhag was actually about in a sense and um, uh, so I think, I think the multiplex does define the content, you're quite right, to come back to your question. Uh, and a certain kind of cinema will get made because it's now no longer reaching out to a um, horizontally across to audiences. It has, it's already class divided its audiences very finely. Who can afford a 600 rupee ticket? Simple, right? So we'll obviously start making uh, films for somebody who can afford a 600 rupee ticket. We will not make films for, uh, you know, people who can't afford that. So yes, uh, you know, Munize really flagged a very important point about uh, cinema and propaganda, right? That is it a healthy, um, direction to go in that all our cinema is propaganda. I mean, I don't, I, I, I think within cinema there will always be propaganda, but it should not be the, it shouldn't be your entire, you know, oeuvre of cinema. I mean, it can be one section of it. And the other way is this multiplex phenomena which kind of class divides the audiences. Is there any way to sort of uh, go beyond that? And I think that will depend on the filmmaker and their initiative. Do they actually want to take their audience uh, to that audience? Do they want to take their cinema to different audiences? If they want to, they'll find ways, I'm right. sure. And I think uh, it's not only uh, dividing the multiplex. I, I also uh, am a fan of multiplex. It's not that I'm against it. Uh, it because it has uh, brought a lot of positive things. But uh, I think it is not only uh, one of the negative things is that it's uh, dividing the, the um, uh, cin cinema audience on class basis. Uh, but it also uh, kind of uh, dictating the content because only certain kind of films are coming, uh, you know, now on multiplexes. Uh, because if you look at the old style Punjabi films, we had uh, last year two, uh, two films released which, uh, you know, most of the multiplex did not even run. I mean, it's the quality of the film and that can be obviously judged. But I'm saying that the, it is changing entirely. The, that what kind of films uh, should be made. So I welcome uh, Sanjay is here finally. Uh, Sanjay is, is, is from uh, based in Bangalore if I'm correct. Uh, he's a screen actor. Uh, and Sanjay before you came we were uh, talking about Lucia and, right. and film distribution and how independent uh, s films uh, can be distributed globally because we all know that uh, you know mainstream cinema from Bollywood and Hollywood both uh, already has a global network of distribution, they, they're not bothered about it, but uh, Lucia is an ideal example of how it not only reached larger Indian audience, but it actually reached globally. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I'm uh, sorry I'm late, uh, some police stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, We're all familiar with that, yeah. Yes. Uh, and I'm sorry if I'm repeating something that's already been said. 
Uh, I'm Sanjay, I live in Bangalore and uh, work mostly in Kannada films and theatre, English theatre mainly. Um, our industry is called Sandalwood um, and it is a lesser Indian industry but I don't know by Pakistani standards. I mean, something like 150 films came out in 2014. Yeah. Uh, so, nothing which, compares to that in Pakistan. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, compared to Bollywood and Telugu and Tamil, it's small. Um, I'll go through the story of Lucia briefly. Uh, the director is a guy called Pawan Kumar that I knew from theatre. He was 29 at the time. And... Uh, I've never seen such a self-possessed, wonderful, sort of confident young man uh, before. Um, he had this idea. He'd worked in the industry, in the mainstream, uh, under a guy called Yograj Bhatt, who is a kind of guru in, uh, in, in, in Kannada film industry. And so he had the credentials. He'd been an AD. He had made a film himself. But with the script of Lucia, uh, I'm coming to the point of, uh, you know, can the lo local become global and so on. Um, the idea for Lucia uh, 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 basically involves um, the swallowing of a certain drug that helps you control your dreams. So it has shades of Inception, it has shades of Vanilla Sky. But no producer would touch the film, no producer would even hear him out. So he sort of said to hell with it and as you may have heard, he went through the social media and asked to collect 55 lakhs. Um, he achieved that in 27 days. Um, then some guy in London got very impressed and said, wow, you've done 55 lakhs. I would like to match that with another 55 lakhs. Pawan, being a Don Quixote type, said, no, thank you. I will make my film with my 55 lakhs. He did it and then um, got into, as I came in, I heard some talk about multiplexes. He got into the multiplexes in the state of Karnataka but more interestingly, through a company in London called Distrify, he had a pay-per-view kind of release all over the world through the internet. And it reached, I'm not sure of the number, but something like 27 countries through this method. Now, um, oh, the, there's a sort of paradox at work here because uh, the, obviously the content of the film uh, did not sort of resemble your standard sort of song and dance and fight and hero meets heroine kind of uh, formula. Um, and because it didn't, presumably producers weren't interested. So, uh, arguably the content of the film was very global and therefore it reached sort of audiences all over the world uh, who cared for a certain kind of cinema. But paradoxically, it is also the, the, the methodology or the modality by which it reached these people is a very localized one. It almost resembles, I wonder in Pakistan if you have this uh, phenomenon of binge watching things like uh, The Wire and mm. Breaking Bad. Has that hit, hit yes, here? Yes, it has. So that's a kind, there is a kind of localized way in which you can think of it. That, that content reaches niche audiences in, in, in private spaces. So the idea of going to a cinema is possibly receding and this is opening up the scope for all kinds of interesting work to be done. I'll stop there just so that I... You no, know, um, I Meenu, would you like to add something to... I think Sanjay mentioned the global uh, appeal of Lucia. That even though it's, it's a thriller, uh, you know, but still it managed to appeal because there are many thrillers being made everywhere. Why certain films, uh, either their, their treatment of the script is global, you know, how, they, how does it work? Because I think Zindabad also uh, went a lot in a lot of countries and people reacted to it very positively. So can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, uh, just just to, in, yeah, I'd love to hear about Zindabad actually. Okay. Um, no, please go ahead, you wanted to say something. No, no, I uh, wanted Ajay. to hear of course. Uh, well, uh, the thing is, you know, with um, um, what uh, Sanjay just said is uh, very interesting uh, and we should uh, sort of talk about it, how um, when I said that Lucia sort of sidestepped the mainstream sort of distribution, which, you know, which is uh, the networks of Bollywood, Hollywood, and all mainstream cinema. And 
in a way reached people's homes, right? So in a way also sidestepping uh, theaters and cinema halls. And uh, it is true that, you know, with all, uh, uh, you know, series like The Wire or True Detective, etc., there is a global audience that is opening out, you know, for a certain kind of content and they're viewing that content at home. And I think that is where, you know, what happened with Lucia, which is a Kannada film, which is so impressive because somebody looked at their content and cleverly, you know, uh, 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 you know, had the thinking to know how to get this content, know their content and then to take it uh, to the people who would be interested in that content. So very often I don't know if, um, as presently definitely it's not there in Pakistan, that kind of film marketing and that kind of film distribution. Uh, I don't think anybody is actually looking at content and saying, okay, this content, who would like to see it? And how can we market it so that those people come to the cinema and they usually come to the cinema to watch Hollywood, okay? And they usually come to the cinema to watch Bollywood. How can we convince them to come to the cinema to watch a Punjabi film? So a film in a vernacular language, you know, which is not your old Lollywood Punjabi film. Now this, this takes a certain kind of thinking and this takes a certain kind of film marketing and clever distribution. But I don't think that is presently happening, you know, in uh, Pakistan at all. So people are just throwing their films in cinemas and, you know, hoping that star value and uh, somebody was telling me the other day that action is becoming the preferred genre of Pakistani cinema. Now I really contest that. I, I mean, I don't know if it's a chicken and egg situation. We are only getting action films, right? So that's what people are going to watch. You haven't created that audience to watch other kind of, uh, uh, you know, cinema beyond uh, action genre, uh, etc. So with Zindabad, for instance, I mean, it's a film in a it's in Punjabi, and we were told by distributors when we were uh, uh, we came went to them that we have severely limited our film by having it in Punjabi. And our argument was, well, it's a film based in Lahore, yeah, and it's a Lahori film, and how it would, and if you want to be realistic, which the film was, then these, uh, these young men will speak in Punjabi, and, you know, therefore we didn't change that, we stuck to Punjabi. And I keep giving this example, the highest grossing film in Punjab, Faisalabad, is Fast and Furious, okay? And uh, that's not in a local language, I'm sure. And uh, so, you know, then you'll argue that, but, you know, Fast and Furious is not about the language, it's about cars and racing and everything. But, but in Karachi also, it went, it did very well. Yeah, in Karachi, what? Zindabad. Uh, Zindabad. Yeah, so that's it. Eventually, being a Punjabi film, the longest run that Zindabad had was in Karachi. Uh, which was an eight-week run. So I think that's because a certain kind of multiplex audience has already got created in Karachi, you know, which comes out to not only watch offbeat Pakistani cinemas, but which comes out to watch offbeat Indian cinema. So you will see very interesting Indian films releasing in Karachi, right? So, uh, so yeah, I, I, I don't know what, I've completely uh, gone on a no, tangent. If, if I want to uh, bring you back on that, I think my question was that, uh, you know, is it just the content or just the distribution network? Uh, but my question is that also the content should be in a certain way that, I mean, Lucia uh, did well because uh, it was treated in a certain way. It was just not another, just See, a, I, any I mean, other film. I, I'd be careful with that kind of uh, direction, you know, because that would mean that you are making, uh, you're making your film backward. In a way, you're saying, okay, this audience wants this, so I'll give them this. I don't know if that can work, right? You make the film you want to make, and then you try to be like Lucia, understand where this content could go, right? And, and if there are filmmakers in the audience, I'd say you have to get involved. If you're an indie filmmaker, there's no way that you cannot get involved in the distribution and marketing, right? You have to throw yourself into that and then find your audiences. So like, you know, with uh, Zindabhag, the 70 Korangi screenings, this is something we wanted to do, which was a pop-up cinema. It's, it's an inflatable screen, you know, it has no cost. We just go to these areas, we use the old forms, which is megaphone and, you know, telling people that there's going to be the screening. We have an inflatable screen and we show the film. And, and again, I think if I remember, a lot of people said that, uh, you know, one of the screening was in an area which is uh, full of Bengali speaking people. And people said that it's a Punjabi film and nobody's going to watch it and uh, a lot of people watched it. So I think... Yeah, again, they watched yeah. it and after that there was so much, uh, so, so much stories because all these uh, people who were watching films had a cousin or an uncle who had tried to cross uh, across illegally. Some people who, you know, they have not heard back from their relatives. So it, the language was not a barrier. Come on, in South Asia, 
I mean, if you are, we do understand a lot of, you know, languages. It's, um, I think content can cross and we are used to watching other films in subtitles, mm. so. So, yeah, so to just to sum up, I think you, sh you should be, from, you should know what your content is and what the audience for that is. You know, you can't release a film like Zinda Bhag uh, the same way you would release a film which is, uh, which is, which has Shan or something else. You'll have to come up with something clever for that. Okay. Uh, Sanjay, if I may ask you uh, to comment on that, that earlier before you came we were talking about uh, news media that they, they obviously choose to uh, you know uh, show certain things and comment upon only certain things. Similarly, my question is that in cinema, uh, is there also uh, this thing that only certain kind of uh, cinema can travel uh, globally from, from the independent non-mainstream cinema or, or is it the other way around? So it's a very good question uh, and also listening to, uh, you know, uh, uh, Zinda Bagh, uh, the background to it. Um, I'll say just a couple of things. Um, Lucia, uh, Kannada cinema uh, has been unable to deal with urban Karnataka, which is Bangalore. Uh, it has just not been able to deal with it. Um, so your standard trope in Kannada films is, uh, is the guy who... Uh, he lives in the village and the city is a bad place. Uh, and I wonder if in Pakistani cinema this is a problem. That with urban Punjabi, youth, yes. With Punjabi cinema, just, exactly. They uh, just don't know how to treat that content. So arguably, um, Lucia has broken that barrier. That a kid in Bangalore, uh, being filmed in Bangalore with a Bangalore life, uh, has become a sort of content that, that people globally can relate to. Mm -hmm. So that's one point. Um, I, I, okay, I mean, this is a bit sort of a bit off point, but I'm currently in a film which I should not name because you'll realize when I tell you what I'm telling you, uh, which concerns the, uh, it's a complete formula film uh, in which uh, I play a British scientist, don't ask, um, uh, and I apparently discover a village that is 100% uranium, right? Uh, and so I tell my boss, this is pre-independence, um, that this is 1946 or something uh, and I tell my British boss that we have found this uh, village full of uranium and we need it to make a bomb like the one that Hitler dropped on Japan. So I went to the director and I said, um, uh, you know, actually Hitler didn't drop the bomb on Japan. It, he said, no. I said, no. So he said, who dropped the bomb? I said, uh, it was the United States. He says, United States? I said, yeah. <laughs> and I could just feel his whole worldview was shattered <laughs> because he had already painted his villain. So I, I'm responding in a funny way to the question that, that um, this comes out of some sort of media stereotyping, right? Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I don't, you know, the Islamic bad guy is a stereotype you will see everywhere, right? Mm. So uh, I think your point is well taken that that I the cinema feeds off the media, but in this completely perverted way. I mean, mm. um, right. Hitler dropping the bomb on Japan is just... <laughs> <laughs> so, the, also the other point to be made is that this director clearly doesn't want to reach a global audience. He doesn't <laughs> care beyond his village audience. Yeah. He doesn't need anyone to be convinced of the plausibility of anything. Yeah. I hope you haven't told this story to the police reporting guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Munise, if you uh, can add uh, something to this debate that, uh, you know, like uh, we were discussing that, you know, certain kind of uh, representation is done in news media. Mm -hmm. Similarly, uh, in cinema, is it that only certain kind of movies can travel abroad or, or should there be, uh, should be, should it be the other way around? Well, I mean, I would assume that all kinds of films travel abroad, um, but I mean, the real test is in the actual story, from what I understand. I mean, I've seen a lot of films with great technical moves, but no story. And I, I think what really moves an audience is story. But I, I actually have a question for you, because something that you said was very interesting to me, and we would like to learn from the, the experience, um, is that you said that basically in certain films actually bypass the traditional distribution houses and distribution channels and were able to distribute the films despite the fact that they didn't go to the main cinema, the right. main multiplexes. Now, and social media had a role to play in it. So, uh, Minu just said that we don't have that system here. We don't have a social media that can 
allow us to no, do that. No, I said that we don't have, like, we don't have that kind of clever film marketing and distribution. This, yeah, we can, of course, use but, the but social there, media. But there is social media yes. and it's growing in huge numbers in Pakistan. So we would actually like to know from you, how, how does this happen? You know, to be honest, I am uh, possibly of a generation where it, I mean, even I am marveling at how cleverly he did it. Um, uh, if you're asking for sort of details of the modality, one is that the, that Lucia, by uh, doing crowdfunding, uh, wound up having 170 producers whose names come on the screen. So you have, oh, by having 170 producers, you have 170 highly motivated distributors as well. And uh, I think the pleasant surprise, which is good news for all of us, is that that it was offered uh, as a pay-per-view thing and uh, in a kind of, um, you know, a legal pyramid scheme kind of thing where if you brought in uh, more pay-per-views, you got a commission for it. And so there were people who, you know, invested uh, like $10 and made like $3,000 out of it and so on through this kind of uh, uh, pyramid marketing. Um, so these are some of the aspects. Uh, the, the heartening thing is that people actually paid to watch Lucia when we know that in today's world, you know, torrenting and mm. uh, stealing stuff off the internet is becoming the norm. Uh, there is a parallel movement where if you offer good content and say, look, I'm asking you for five dollars, mm. you're getting it. Mm. Right? I, think it's, I think it's a combination of just sheer courage and Possibly a lot of luck, I mean. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean one. Well, can, can we have it here? I'm asking the two of you. Um, of course, I think we can. I mean, you know, so, so uh, this would not be Pavan individually doing it, right? So there would be a platform like you named it, I'm sorry. It, it's in uh, London, it's called Distrify. Distrify, right? So, but there's first the decision or the clever decision that you are going to bypass cinemas, right? Mm -hmm. Th that's what I think, that's what's lacking. That how do you, A, to know that you have this content, yeah, yeah. which can actually probably will be consumed better uh, on, not in the cinema, but through social media, everything, to know that, you know, to know your content and to be then clever with it. So, mm -hmm. of course, it can be done. Yeah, you know? I think if I may add that it is very possible, but there, there are two aspects to it. There, one is the technical infrastructure, uh, you know, that the, the, I mean, for example, in Pakistan, we still don't have a merchant account. If you want to s start a website with a merchant account, it's a, it's a big, a big problem. Only certain banks offer it. Yeah. So, a, a, you need a certain, uh, you know, infrastructure for that. Yeah. And uh, B, I think so social media is there and the will is there. As Minu said that if somebody wants to market their film and distribute their film cleverly, yes, of course. But mm -hmm. right now, I think it's, it's, we are in the infancy stage. Uh, and I think uh, that, you know, uh, there are filmmakers in Pakistan who are, you know, so strapped in terms of infrastructure, logistics, money, yeah. that they are actually uh, doing very interesting things. So, I mean, uh, Kachi Takis or pop-up cinema is just one idea, you know, uh, to take your cinema because, you know, as you know, that there are total number of, I think, 50 screens in Pakistan. Yeah, I mean, the, the actually, uh, it's re less than 50, but yeah. the total number is something like so 66. So, we are talking about, you know, that would be, if, if you compare it to India, I mean, if you uh, compare it to, like, you can get a sense from the fact that Kannada uh, films, 150 films were made yeah. in the year. So, you can get the scale of the market. 50 screens would be one area of... Uh, um, a city, you know, in uh, India. Mm -hmm. So there's anywhere th in, ter in terms of theatres, there's a limit placed on the filmmaker, logistics, infrastructure. But I think Pakistani filmmakers are doing very interesting things. For instance, recently I saw that Iram Parveen Bilal, who uh, made the film Josh, did something very clever. Uh, you know the whole film piracy thing in Pakistan. Right, right. She went to she went to the DVD stores, which are the biggest piracy people, and she said, you distribute my DVD and do it legally, right? Mm -hmm. And so now, uh, the very stores that you all go to pick up uh, pirated DVDs from are legally distributing Josh, and their network is huge. So when that network opened up, it's all over Pakistan. So Josh is now being distributed legally through DVD, through the pirated stores. So it's a very clever very thing to clever. do. It's yeah, a very yeah. clever thing to do. So. I think filmmakers are coming up with ways and, you know, fighting the challenges um, and if the infrastructure goes, you know, and, uh, you know, film is not like painting or film is not like, there are too many aspects of that business, you know, it's not just one thing. So, I think those other aspects like film marketing, distribution, people who know all of this will also have to develop for, you know, uh, 
for the uh, content to open up. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to make one small point. Um, you know, I want to emphasize, re-emphasize what you said, which was rather beautiful, that uh, you have to make the film these days believing in your content. Mm. You have to do it. You, you can't outguess the market. You know, and uh, Lucia was made in 55 lakhs, which is peanuts. Uh, it was shot with this very camera, actually. Mm. Um, this is a 5D? You? Huh? Yeah, anyway, uh, something like this, a DSLR. Uh, and, and if you've seen Lucia, I urge you to see it because it actually has, it, it's got a look. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, with a lot of sort of clever marketing, uh, films are possible these days on very small budgets or at least reasonably small budgets. And uh, to respond to the, the panel's theme, uh, they are capable now of having global reach because of social media and the internet. Okay. Thank you. Um, now, uh, if we can take some uh, questions. Uh, yes, please. Hello. Hi. Um, putting distribution aside in terms of content, I just wanted to ask, uh, you know, there's a lot of discourse on whether uh, Pakistani, the local audience, is ready for films. I feel that we tend to be uh, more critical than appreciative. We, try, uh, we tend to focus on what's left out of the content rather than recognizing the merits of films. So I, my question was that I'd like you to comment on the relationship between local audience and global cinema and whether we can, you know, uh, whether Pakistani cinema can flourish globally without kind of having that local reach. Uh, well, you know, uh, I think uh, the people are very enthusiastic about films and, uh, you know, the social media is a very weird place, right? I think uh, uh, it can also be a very negative place, right? So if you're a filmmaker, I would say, you know, don't take everything that is said on the social media seriously. I think people are more enthusiastic about, uh, you know, putting galis and mean stuff on there than coming up and actually saying good stuff. It, so very often the people who liked your film may not take the trouble, but, you know, people love because it's anonymous in a certain way and that anonymity breeds certain, <laughs> you know, weird reactions from people. So I think actually film, uh, it's, uh, fil people are very enthusiastic. Look, a film like Zinda Bhag being eight weeks in the cinema, it's way beyond my expectation. I didn't expect it to be in the cinema for more than two weeks, right? Because uh, the distributors had told us that, you know, you don't have a happy ending in your film. And mostly people who come to theaters, uh, they have to go for dinner and things like that afterwards. And if you ruin their mood, then they can't have dinner and stuff, right? So, <laughs> so I wasn't really expecting. So we have that f uh, feedback. I think, you know, uh, this uh, one more thing, I think this obsession, you know, with um, uh, how are we painting the image of Pakistan abroad? I think we should forget about because in one breath we say this and in the second breath we talk about Iranian cinema. Do you think Iranian filmmakers are concerned about the image of Iran uh, globally and that too the image people have already decided what kind of image they want, right? So if, you, if you're so concerned with image then make ads, you know, films are not uh, to uh, uh, make brands and, you know, uh, you know, basically propagate a certain image of a country. We tell real stories and uh, that cannot be our preoccupation. So I think we shouldn't be so concerned about what kind of content will g work here or work there. Make, make the stories that, you know, seem real to you. Well, I'd like to add to that. I, I quite agree with her. I think the, the important thing is to have a real story. And look at, look at Friends. We all watch it all over the world. I mean, it's dubbed into so many languages. It's I dubbed think in Punjabi also. It's dubbed yeah. in Punjabi yeah. also and people really enjoy it. I think, you know, basic human feelings like hate, love, jealousy, they're all in it. And I think even with Zinda Bhag, uh, somebody that I know was Turkey said, you know, similar, I've, we've had similar situations there. So I think we are, as people, we are more similar than different. And I think that's what, if you, if you have a good story, uh, people, people will, you will realize how many, how many more people relate to it than few people. There's a point to be made about the Irani cinema as well, that it has a very, very uh, odd and interesting and fascinating origin 
that in the late 80s, early 90s, the first generation of, um, you know, the Makmal Buffs and the Majid Majidis, Kirastami, realized that there was money in the child welfare department mm. for so-called child welfare. And so, you, if you think back, all those films had children at the center of it. Mm. But how beautifully they managed to evoke, as you say, mm. you know, love, hate, the whole, yeah. whole human sort of universe mm. uh, within Bad such a restricted kind of, uh, uh, you know, funding. Hi. Um, okay, this question is an offshoot from Meenu's response to the earlier question. So you were saying that if you want to nation brand Pakistan, so you would rather go and make ads instead of making films. But I think I would have a different opinion to that because when it comes to nation branding, obviously you have award-winning, Oscar-winning documentaries who show that you know how frequent it is for men to throw assets onto women's faces. But then that's the kind of image that you put projecting to the outer world and with the media, as Mazda said, there's only one story that the media portrays. Isn't it very important for us to also understand that, okay, you have a negative, so you speak about terrorism, you speak about Islamic fundus in um, Pakistan, but then you should also focus on the good parts of Pakistan, which I don't think so a lot of people are doing right now. So I would like to um, have your say on it. Yeah, see, I think it depends on what you uh, believe is good and bad, right? You can't dictate that to a filmmaker. So when we made Zindabhag, for instance, it's a comedy for its most part. It shows three young men having a whale of a time in Lahore. I mean, it really makes Lahore look like a party place. What better image do you want to give out to, uh, you know, people? That people in Lahore are having a great time. They are, there's a, they are vibrant, they're fun, they're quirky, they're cool, right? But then you can't say, you know, why did you show in the end that this boy uh, decides to go illeg illegally abroad? Is that not true? Is that not true of uh, Pakistani Punjab? Is that not true of Indian Punjab? You know, so... I mean, you cannot, actually what you're saying is don't tell the truth in films. That's not fair. Then why make, like, why would a filmmaker like me be interested in telling films? So that's why I'm saying that if you want that kind of branding, where, you know, it's not at all nuanced and you just want a certain image to go out, then advertising is prob possibly a better medium for that. And uh, if I may add to that, you know, uh, this whole debate of uh, image building, uh, yeah. because when uh, there was war in Iraq and the American media broke the story of Abu Ghraib, uh, that was really, really bad for America and American army was at war. But there was no question about the, the whole image of America at that exactly. time. Exactly. So and think, think about the Iranian the films you like. You see, those so Iranian films are critiques of what's happening in Iran, right? Mm -hmm. They are critiques, but they are so beautiful. They and Or think of any other good film that you enjoy, you know, that has actually made you think or is thoughtful enough. There will be a critique in there. So you can't put a ban on that critique. That's all I want to say. Can I just add something to it? Yeah, you're, you know, bang on, spot on. But what I'm saying is that I'm not just pointing it out to um, Zinda Bhag. That was a marvelous film and all of us know that. But I'm just talking about it as a general phenomenon, for example. So, um, right, you show the real story, you show the real picture, you show the real truth. But then you also show a balanced image. For example, yes, illegal immigration, acid throwing, it's happening in Pakistan. But then there are also beautiful things that are also happening in Pakistan. I'm not just pointing it out to one particular filmmaker, I'm just talking it about as a general phenomenon. Do you think we should shift our content cleverly into that direction? No, we should have more filmmakers. So that if we have more filmmakers, there'll be more kinds of films, right? Different films. I don't think we should put a pressure on a filmmaker on what kind of film they should make. They should yeah. make the kind of film they want to make. Yeah, and I think that pressure also comes to us in the media that why don't you show this side, why don't you show that side. I think eventually at the end of the day, journalists, filmmakers want to tell the story and they want to tell the story as truthfully as they possibly can. So yes, there are many stories out there and I choose to tell this story but I shouldn't be banned from telling the story or it shouldn't be put in my mind that you have to balance it otherwise you are not doing your country a justice. I think that's that is very unfair and this whole sense of patriotism which is hinged on to just whether you show this or you don't show this, I don't think patriotism is, is that weak in any, in any sense. So I think she's right, there have to be more films out there and, and you know it's a fair, uh, it's, it's a, you know, it, there's fair competition here. So the more the films the better and then everybody gets to tell their story. Uh, hello, my name is Farhan Khan. First, I would like to congratulate Ms. Meenu uh, for the Zindabad, uh, one of the uh, 
good movie I have seen last year. My question is that when uh, the Bollywood movies came here in Pakistan, it was in 2007, it was said that uh, there will be joint production of, Holly of Bollywood and the Lollywood. But I haven't seen uh, lots of movies which has the joint uh, production of India and Pakistan cinemas. One thing, could you explain it? And there are some projects which are in pipeline. Well, um, the thing is that, you know, this sort of co-production, uh, you know, eventually film is uh, seen as something, you know, which is trade, business, etc. So for that market to open out, for co-productions to happen uh, with anybody, not just uh, India, even for a co-production to happen between Pakistan and UK, there are certain many agreements that have to come in place, right? And because the cinema industry uh, in Pakistan is just, you know, it's like um, uh, just starting now again. So actually, very interestingly, these agreements are not in place. So Pakistan has very few co-production agreements, you know, with the world, which is a, which is a very difficult uh, thing for filmmakers. Uh, abhi to, you know, with India, the biggest challenge is visas, you know. So if you can get, uh, if you want an Indian uh, uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, somebody from India to work in your film or vice versa, then I think people are just happy to solve the visa issues and get by. So no, I think co-production is not yet on the cards and it's not going to happen unless something formal you know happens on that side of agreements and I stuff like we that. We have a question for maybe one or two more questions. Hi, thank you. Since this session is about going from localization to globalization, do you have any useful suggestions for filmmakers about how to access uh, international festivals with their films? Yeah. That's a well, uh, you know, uh, the thing is that uh, the social media and all of that really helps in, uh, you know, there are programmers for festival, as you all probably know, that all fe film festivals have certain programmers dedicated to certain uh, regions, right? So, uh, every big festival will have a programmer dedicated to South Asia, uh, etc. And the main thing is for you to be, your content to reach those programmers so that they are able to see your films and then um, if they think that your film is uh, worth it to recommend it uh, to the film festival. So really I think uh, once you make a film, it's, uh, and if you're an independent filmmaker, social media is a fairly cheap uh, platform, you know, to get the word out on your film. So you need to get the word out so that the programmers know your film exists, you know the programmers, and you're able to show in film festivals. I mean, we have, sh Zindabad shown in a lot, lot of uh, film festivals now. Um, it is uh, presently as we speak today showing in Paris and I think that's really just happened because of um, uh, you know uh, because we didn't have any big marketing budget or bu marketing spend on our film so it really happened around the buzz uh, that was created around the film around people who had watched it who went on Twitter went on Facebook talked about it um, so I think yeah for new filmmakers that is a way uh, there's no centralized system there's no centralized there's, system you know, unfortunately like, film, like in other places like in UK film council used to do this job and uh, in India probably there are some institutions which recommend films I mean uh, for the last two years we have this uh, Pakistan committee which recommends film for Oscars but before that uh, or after that I think there is no uh, centralized institution which is taking care of this thing or uh, recommending Pakistani films uh, for global uh, festivals or distribution. I think one thing good about Pakistan is that if you you're a film from Pakistan, to be honest, you already have the attention of a lot of people because they don't see that many films from Pakistan. So you know you should you, that that is one way. Uh, you know you should use that that you know it's a it's a growing industry. There's all kind of interesting content and reach out to film festivals and. Uh, show your content there. I think the main thing for filmmakers in the audience to know is that if you think that writing that script or making that film or, and your job's done, no, it's like a very yeah. painful and long journey, uh, you know, that you have to keep en yourself engaged in, you know. So. Also, just two yes, small please. points. Yeah. Uh, one, I, I would like to again endorse uh, what's been said because I think Pakistan's time has come. Uh, India has had a, had a decade-long season. There's festivals of India everywhere. I think uh, I just have a gut feeling that Pakistan's time has come and I feel that th th there's a momentum that will happen once, uh, you know, once, once, once a Zindabad happens, it, it will happen. Uh, the other thing is that, you know, about the, this globalized and localized, that kind of, that the, the tensions between those two. When India globalized officially uh, or liberalized the economy around 1990, 1991, 
the first wave of splashy Bollywood films, uh, I'll just take one example, Hum Aapke Hain Kon, which many might have seen. Uh, it created an Indian wedding. Now, there is no community in India that gets married like Hum Aapke Hain Kon, but <laughs> they created an Indian wedding out of it. And now real weddings are based on the Hum Aapke Hain Kon model. True. So, there was, a, there was a megalomania at work. And I think that social media and the internet have cracked that. So, we can tell small stories of small communities which will reach niche markets across the world and it's a great time for that. I just wanted to bring that up. Yeah. Okay. I think we are out of time, I am being told. Uh, so, thank you very much, just Sanjay. One more question. Uh, last. Okay, one last question. May I? Just one last question. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I have a comment and a question, uh, right. comment about Zindabhag. I'm a Pakistani living uh, in the US and I saw Zindabhag in the US and it was one of my proudest moments. It was a brilliant film and it Thank was um, amazing to see. My question has to do with, um, with the role of women or re the representation of women because Zindabhag, as brilliant as it was, uh, was a little disappointing in terms of its overshadowing of female characters. So I'm sure you've thought about this and I'm just curious what your thoughts were and maybe the panel generally can talk about the representation especially of women in urban South Asia. Thanks. Well, um, uh, to be honest, I mean, you know, I, uh, f uh, I feel that uh, the one character, Rubina, in the film, uh, it, uh, it was done through a very feminist lens, right? Because uh, uh, as you know that she's the only hero in the film. She's the only person who is not looking for a shortcut, who is willing to uh, work hard and, uh, you know, she, she decides to leave the hero, which is, I think, unprecedented, that, you know, she's not wanting to sacrifice her whole life for the hero. She leaves the hero because, you know, he's useless and, you know, uh, whatever. So, act while, I, uh, while I know that it wasn't a central character, like the three boys, because it was essentially a story about the three boys, but the woman character is the only heroic character in the film. So, for me, that was from a very, very feminist lens, yeah. Okay, uh, thank you everybody, Sanjay, Munize, Meenu. Thank, uh, thank you everybody. Thank you.